talk about coordinate systems and map projections. This is an hour-long lecture. I'm going to give the five-minute version. So um, just the absolute things that you need to know. But I gave you, um, so on the jump drive, um, that circulated you have the entire lecture and you can ask me questions now or later uh, if you want um, but they're really um, important these are links to um, good um, things to read about coordinate systems um, and in um, in QGIS they're called coordinate reference systems um, but the main issue is that um, most of the data are collected and come in this geographic coordinate system which uses units of latitude and longitude um, and that are represented on a sphere essentially um, and but we need to represent things in a planar coordinate system x y coordinate system and when you do that there are distortions and so you need to um, you need to a project but b project to the correct coordinate system for your study um, so this is just illustrating what I already said an unprojected coordinate system is the geographic coordinate system the units will always be units of degrees of latitude and longitude and then you have lots of different projection families and, and um, projection uh, choices when you want to take those geographic data and make a map which most of you seem to be doing right you want those geographic coordinates in an XY planar Cartesian coordinate system system. Um, so the, the, the one thing, um, and most of you know about meridians and so I'll skip all that. Um, if you have your um, data collected in degrees, minutes, seconds, here's a formula to convert those to decimal degrees or vice versa. Okay, here's the formula, the uh, approach to do it the other way. But a lot of you are asking about this, and Aaron, um, Ben, and probably Aida and I can help you if you have any of your data like that. We can help you set it up in Excel so that you can do the conversion. But you now have um, you now have the formula as well uh, if you need it. But basically, you take anything that's in minutes and you divide it by 60 and you take anything that's in seconds and you divide it by 3600 which is just 60 times 60 um, and you add up now everything's in degrees and you just add it up and you have it in decimal degrees uh, so it's fairly straightforward really straightforward to do in Excel and so we can do it um, do not make maps in a geographic coordinate system this is the United States geographic uh, you know um, in a GCS um, and you can see it's distorted, like if you know anything about the shape of the U.S., it's absolutely distorted. And this is it projected, this one's an equal area projection, but... Um. <coughs> <coughs> so there are two things when picking a... Well, there are two main things when you're picking a, a projected coordinate system. Um, well, no, actually, let me back up. The big issue and I should, is when you're trying to represent the Earth, like in all of these diagrams I've shown, rep representing the Earth as a sphere. But the Earth is not a sphere except for physicists. And it makes sense for physicists because they don't care what the exact shape of the Earth is. All they care about is how far it is to other solar systems and planets and all of that, okay? But the Earth, just because of um, the way it rotates, is actually, um, is actually flattened at the poles. It's an ellipse. And on top of that, it's got topography, right? There are places on Earth that are taller and, and, and uh, less tall than others. And it matters what the shape of the Earth is when you're when you're um, when you're measuring things in angles, because if you if you put your you know if you say oh this is my degrees that I'm measuring to to you know from Greenwich or whatever that I'm measuring where I'm from, if if you're approximating the Earth as a sphere, oops, <laughs> a poor sphere, um, your location would be here. But if you're approximating it as an ellipsoid, 
your location would be here. And so it really matters what that choice is. Um, and that choice is the datum, okay? So when you keep hearing datums, uh, the, the idea of, you know, the WGS 80, 1984 or Clark 1866, those are all datums. And all they are are 3D models of the planet. So what, how do we best approximate the shape of the planet? That's a datum. And there are different datums that do a better job at different places in the world. So if, you're, if you want to plot data that are along in, you know, around Everest, you would pick this one. If it was Australia, you would pick this one. So it's, then it's a 3D model of that location um, th that does a really good job at that location. That's the datum. Um, and the datum is, um, is composed of the, well, and you don't really need to know this, but it, it has, you know, if, if the Earth was a sphere, you would only need one parameter to say what the shape of the Earth is. That would be the radius. If you say, oh, no, 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 the Earth is, a, is an ellipsoid, then I need two parameters. I need alpha A and B. So that would be these parameters. But I can also change where this origin is, and I can also change the orientation of this ellipse to best approximate the shape of the 3D Earth on the planet. So this is what this is showing, right? Um, so here's what I'm trying, this is the quote-unquote real shape of the Earth, although it's, it's the mean sea level, but... And then your datum is that 3D shape, and if I, if that, that, that ellipsoid can fit really well over here, but I could shift it here and rotate it a little, and it would fit really well over there. So the datum choice really affects, um, how you're representing the Earth as a 3D object. Once you've picked the datum, um, so, so sometimes you have a file that needs to change from one datum to another. That would be a 3D transformation conversion to a three, another 3D um, representation of Earth. That's called a geographic transformation. So you're, you're saying, oh, this model of um, the Earth as a 3D object is not what I need as my base to do all the projection calculations. I need another 3D model of the Earth. Both of those are datum. I'm changing from one datum to another datum. That's called a geographic transformation. Once you have your appropriate model of 3D Earth, you'll want to project it. And Ben already went over the projection families, and again, this is just quick and dirty. Um, so, and, and each projection will, will have its own distortions. So you have to think, do I want to conserve area? Do I want the relative area on the map to, between two countries to be the same as it would be on the globe? Then I want an equal area map projection. Do I want shape to not be distorted? If that's the case, then I want a conformal projection. And remember, when you were picking, you know, in QGIS for the different choices, it often gives you in the name, oh, Al, you know, the, the one we have been using is Africa, Lambert, equal area, right? So it had equal area in the name, therefore I know that it would conserve area um, and, and, be, and be a good choice for, you know, any kind of land use land cover calculation or anything like that. No map projection can both conserve shape and equal air and area. So that's where the big, um, the big discrepancy comes in. I'll tell you, I, by default, I use equal area projections for any kind of thing I'm doing. And then you can also have equidistant projections and azimutal projections with which um, maintain direction from a center point 
um, and those, but those are additional uh, choices. So what I wanted to show you is in in QGIS. Okay, so in QGIS, how do you do this? So uh, in order to change the way your map looks, your pr project looks, you would go to the project tab, you would go to properties, this would show up, you would hit CRS for coordinate reference system, and then under the coordinate reference system choice here, uh, you would, s well, under the filter, you would search for, in this case, I search for Africa, but you might search for one for your country, or you might look for that universal transverse mercator slice that, that is good for the local area. Um, and, and so in this case, I picked Africa, Albers equal area, conic, and I picked that, and that does a reprojection. It aligns all your layers to what you pick, but it's not the proper way to do it. The proper way to do it is to actually project your files so that if you open them up again later, they're in the correct coordinate system. Um, so if, you're repro if you want to project a vector, then under, you know, you, you can just search in the geo, um, processing toolbox for reproject layer. If you want to proje reproject a raster, you would look for warp. That's just the name of the tools to reproject the two main data models that you have in QGIS. And then within the tool, you, you know, you would have your input layer and then you would pick that target coordinate reference system and you would just go to the drop down and look for the one that's um, appropriate for your analysis. So again, this Africa Albers equal area conic is going to be your go-to if you're doing stuff for Africa at the regional or continental scale. That's just a great one to use. But if you're doing anything at the local scale within your countries, then you probably want to use your UTM, Universal Transverse Mercator Zone, which um, Ben showed you the zones and, and how to pick them. But if you want a refresher, just let me know. This is how the warp tool looks. It's the same idea, right? Input layer, it'll tell you what the input coordinate reference system is, but you're changing the target one. You're telling it, I want a new coordinate system. Create this file that is projected. So I've, this is the like summary of, you know, if there was one slide you need to know, I would say it's this one. Um, if you ever get a layer that doesn't have a coordinate system assigned to it, but in the metadata, remember the data that come with those data, or if someone tells you, oh no, this was in, you know, maybe it was in geographic coordinate system with a datum of 19, WGS 1984, you would assign the projection to that file and say, oh no, this was what it was supposed to. That doesn't change the coordinates in that file. It just, it's extra information you're adding. But if you want to project to make that file a new file with the appropriate coordinate system that you can then use for subsequent analyses and mapping, then you would use the reproject tool for vector layers or the warp tool for raster layers. In those cases, you have a new file with the proper um, way of displaying the data on a 2D surface. Um, and then again, you can do it under project properties, um, but you shouldn't just do it there, right? You shouldn't go from a world, you know, you, that's just, that's not the preferred method to do this. Now, why did I talk to you about datum? Whenever you go to reproject or warp, the, the choice of a datum is wrapped into the choice of the coordinate reference system you pick. So you may have noticed when you look at these things in QGIS, it, look at the coordinate reference system names, there'll be a datum there. And so it's just, there's no choice usually, it's whatever is associated with that, that coordinate system you picked. But sometimes the datum will, will be different and so you might run into trouble where you have to convert the datums 
Um, and if that's the case, um, I mean, try it on your own, but if, if you can, just email me and I'll help you navigate through changing the datum because um, that gets a little bit tricky. It's, it's, it's totally baked in, uh, but if you have two different datums, then, then you get in trouble sometimes.